Now on BBC One, we join Jan Leeming for the news. It's 5.35. The double for Dalgleish, Liverpool win the Merseyside Cup final. The league champions, Liverpool, have beaten their neighbours, Everton, in the most thrilling Wembley final for years. Liverpool, one down at half-time, fought back to win 3-1. Mark Austin reports. Football needed a showpiece final more than ever this season, and who better to provide it than the two best sides in the league and 100,000 fans determined to make it a colourful day to remember. And in the battle of the Merseyside Reds and Blues, the Blues struck first. After 27 minutes, an inch-perfect pass from Reed, and the Footballer of the Year, Gary Lineker, did the rest. In the second half, Liverpool were under intense early pressure. But then suddenly, in the space of six minutes, their Danish international, Jan Mulby, turned the game upside down, setting up two splendid goals. First, for Ian Rush and then for Craig Johnson. By now, Liverpool's surge towards a momentous victory was unstoppable. Six minutes from time, Rush made it 3-1. In his first season as player-manager, Kenny Dalgleish has achieved something that no other Liverpool manager could. He's won the league and cup double. Police say the Wembley crowds were well-behaved and they've no reports of serious trouble. But some fans missed the game when their tickets turned out to be forgeries. The Conservative MP John Heddle was attacked outside the ground and his tickets stolen. But he wasn't seriously hurt and the police took him in to see the match. Detectives who travelled from Merseyside interviewed dozens of fans who'd bought the forgeries, which looked a lot like the genuine article on the right, but was slightly smaller. Counts with any kind of ticket could sell them at more than 10 times the face value. Some supporters were prepared to risk almost anything to see the final. That meant a spate of muggings. I got my uh, ticket stolen just going in for the turnstiles. Just had it in my hand like that and smashed it down on my hand. Minutes before kickoff, many fans were still unable to get in. In the crush, there were injuries. The thousands left outside tried the best they could to keep up with the play. By then, any rivalry had been forgotten. Yesterday at Wembley, football showed a face to the nation we've all been longing to see. The FA Cup final was a credit to both great teams. Liverpool did the double, but Merseyside won the day. Turns out that I'm no good, I'll be the first to hold my hand up. And the club's bigger than me and more important than me. And there's no way that I want to jeopardise the club's future. And if I don't think I'm the right person, obviously I'd stand aside. Well, at the turn of the year, it looked as though Liverpool might miss out on a major trophy for the second year running. But uh, timing their finish to perfection with Dalgleish himself playing a leading role on the field, by last weekend, they were that one match away from the league championship. And Dalgleish is in here. Yes! The player manager scores the goal. And so the double, completed only twice previously this century, was on. It's a superb achievement, it's a compliment to everybody. Um, and people will look at it and say, well, you know, what, what a disappointing season because of Liverpool. Uh, our neighbours have done the double, um, and it's a tremendous achievement. And so uh, I, I'm saying to my players, and uh, I'll say to the supporters, really, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Our players have, have done a, an excellent season and have done everything they can. Well, the sporting style of yesterday's occasion, when the Merseyside fans did themselves so much credit inside the stadium at Wembley, continued today uh, when both teams, Liverpool and Everton, flew back together from London to Speak Airport uh, up on Merseyside. Large gathering, of course, waiting for them there. And also waiting with them there, David Davis.
Liverpool may have won, Everton may have come second, but Merseyside is the real winner as the FA Cup and the Canon League Championship trophy come home with both teams. The Everton team first off the plane. And greeted by, amongst others, Derek Hatton, the deputy leader of the council himself, a big Evertonian, as you may have seen on grandstand yesterday. And, and they're heading towards a civic reception inside the new terminal building. Gary Stevens there, and behind him, Gary Lineker and Trevor Stevens. Tomorrow, of course, on their way to join the other England players in Colorado Springs. And Howard Kendall, yesterday so disappointed, today dignified, even cheerful, as he comes home on this very, very special day. And of course, a unique arrival home that unites this city which has suffered so many trials and tribulations in recent times. Kevin Ratcliffe, the Everton captain. His season over, of course, Wales not going to Mexico for the World Cup. A musical welcome for the teams from the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. For the aficionados, the players being serenaded with variations of Here We Go and You'll Never Walk Alone. And Neville Southall, who missed Wembley yesterday, of course, with that ankle injury. Sitting on the bench, going through all the agonies that Everton went through yesterday. Cup winners, the league champions. For only the third time this century, the double has been achieved, and the double, of course, belongs to Liverpool Football Club, the most successful football club of modern times anywhere in the world. And here are Liverpool. Here is Kenny Dalgleish. Dalgleish of Liverpool and Scotland at the end of surely even the finest weekend of his career. Alan Hansen holding the FA Cup. Craig Johnston, scorer of the second goal for Liverpool yesterday at Wembley with them as well. And the players' wives. And everybody wants to see the FA Cup. And they all, I suspect, want Kenny Dalgleish to hold it. Jim Beglin there, who made a crucial tackle yesterday with the score 2-1. Gary Lineker right the way through, and how different the outcome might have been had Lineker made it to all. And there is the unity of this occasion, Gary Stevens with Jim Beglin. Mark Lawrenson there in the background the left of the screen they're heading into a civic reception as I said on the menu I can tell you open sandwiches quiche Lorraine beer and wine for anyone who didn't have enough last night and we had our reporters Kevin Cosgrove and David Davis enjoying the atmosphere on Merseyside And so this extraordinary and unique weekend for Merseyside moves towards its climax. Craig Johnston there, scorer of the second goal, typifying the mood on the Liverpool bus, as you'd expect. And along the 18-mile route, the mixture of red and blue side by side, 
that was visible on the way to Wembley and all those coaches and cars yesterday that we saw inside Wembley that we saw streaming away from the famous old stadium yesterday too well it speaks volumes doesn't it for this city and its love of football and who could have believed on that tragic night in the high school stadium only last May that within a year we'd witness an occasion like this one Kevin Cosgrove along the route he's with one of yesterday's biggest heroes Bruce, Liverpool have had so much success in the last few years. Do you get used to this kind of thing? No, you don't get used to this. It's a marvellous occasion. It's wall to wall of people. Uh, we've we've travelled about two miles now. And they're just wall to wall of yeah, ten deep people. You know. It's a fantastic occasion for Merseyside. It just shows that what Merseyside has to offer for the rest of the world. And the rest of the, uh, the Are you touched by something like this? Yes, I am. Very, very much. Um, Move because uh, the people are so genuine here. Uh, you can see blue and red running around the streets together. There's no trouble at all. Whereas the other, a year ago, we had a lot of trouble in Brussels. And it's marvelous to show the world that uh, what, what football is about in Brussels. Two teams from the same town. The most successful football team of modern times at one with the thousands of supporters who have been waiting for several hours to greet them. And who can say that football is dying on a day like this in Merseyside? The route 18 miles from Speak to the pier head and back again. And here though, along Queen's Drive, one of the most famous roads, very long road, in the heart of Liverpool. And Kevin Cosgrove on the Liverpool bus can get the ladies' view, I think. Yes. Mrs. Dalbeach, how are you enjoying the day? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, the crowds are unbelievable, aren't they? I mean, you never see it anywhere else in the world. How much do you feel touched by an occasion like this? Well, yes, I think when you see sort of the banners and the flags, and I think when you sing, you'll never walk alone. I mean, you just, you just want to cry. It's fantastic. And yesterday, I understand that you made a very critical move at some time during the game. On the rings, yes. I got this ring from a local jeweller, so I thought, well, I haven't worn it all during the season, so I thought I won't put it on. But they were getting beat 1-0 at half time. So I thought, well, I'll put it back on, and it went 3 one so I'll keep it on. Every vantage point here in Liverpool being used today. And what a special day it is. The sort of day you could be certain that in years to come, people, and the children especially, who are here today will be telling of what happened. I was there, they'll say, the day Liverpool brought the League Championship and the FA Cup home, and Everton were there too. And Merseyside, indeed this country, had rarely seen anything like it before. And the FA Cup turned upside down by Bruce Grobelar, who's enjoying this day as you'd expect him to. Grobelar, one of the game's great characters. Thank goodness for Grobelar in a game that cries out for characters. Is this to a certain extent conversation for what happened last year, the disaster in Brussels, etc.? I think um, only a, a club like Liverpool could pick itself up from that disaster. And to come back and win the double the next season, you know, speaks volumes for the club. I mean, the club from top to bottom has run superbly, and the manager and the players give a lot for Liverpool and it's a, a team effort and just fantastic. Kenny, you said it always said it was going to be a fantastic reception and it has been. Incredible really. It's a tribute to both clubs I think. And you're sitting there with the uh, the two things that have made it all happen. Yeah but they haven't contributed as well. They've finished when I got the league, they've finished when I got the in the FA Cup. We've been fortunate to win the two bits of silverware. So the both fans have turned out in the thousands and it's a credit to both clubs, I think. Are you touched by this kind of reception? I think everyone is, yeah. I mean, the lads just keep saying it's unbelievable up front. And it is unbelievable. And on behalf of the lads, I'd just like to thank every single one of them for coming out. How would you describe these kind of scenes? I'm not educated enough for words to, to describe the uh, foot to just a there's no justification to them anyway, I couldn't fit anyone. We're just grateful, and we're absolutely loving it. I 
think your feet have done your talking for yourself this year. My feet, there's an awful lot of other feet at the club have done it, yeah. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you, Thanks, Danny. Pictures that tell their own tale of a footballing city united in its pride. This city and its people, you know, that's kept its pride, really, through all its recent problems, and that today has enjoyed itself and is still enjoying itself hugely. And a city and a people that's never lost its sense of humour. Already the guesstimates have started. How many people are there here? Well, in the past quarter of a million along the route has been the generally agreed figure when Liverpool have brought home those European Cups. Today, on this unique day, that figure will surely have been surpassed. 